Welcome everybody, this is part two of caching and stale data inside of React Query. So make sure you watch the previous video for the basics. This video we're going to be talking about two major things, which is refreshing data on mount and the cache. So the idea of mounting is adding a component to the web page. It's hard to test this without the ability to also remove a component from the web page, which is when something is unmounted. So what we can do is real quick build some capability to add and remove a component from the web page. And you can do this easily one of two ways. The first is with React Router, creating links on the page to go to different components, different pages. This is what we did way early on in the series. Or an alternative would be to create a button that'll toggle a component. Either one's fine, so if you're familiar with React routing, feel free to use that. We're going to create a quick toggle button to display some page, which actually might be some good practice if you wanted to create an application to see more information, and then boom, some information appears, and then you can hide some information. So let's give it a shot. What we're gonna do is we're going to first take all of our display data and move it to its own component so we can render it and then remove it. So let's go ahead and create a component for our customers, which is what we are displaying here. So inside a source, we'll say a new folder components. And I have built the habit of using capital letters for our files in this series. However, a lot of people also use lowercase, so don't feel like you have to follow me, just be consistent inside your project. And I'm going to say const customers, and this will be defined as an arrow function, and then export default customers. You could also define it as a non-arrow function, which we've done many times in this series as well. Cool, now what we can do is we can return all of our customer data here. So let's go ahead and take all this information from our main file. We will need the use query imports, so I will cut those and bring them to the top up here. And then I will take everything inside of this function, yeah, including this last line, then we'll just modify it some. So I'll cut all that and then inside of here I will paste. And then you can modify how you wish, you know, change it in the class names or whatever to adhere to whatever standards you have, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it actually. I'm just going to return customers like so, and this will be imported. So we will say import customers from dot slash components slash customers. Taking a look at our site, you can see it's working as it originally was. Now I do want to remove the behaviors we defined in the previous episode. So we just have the default behaviors. So it will just refetch data on focus. And now I want to create a button to basically toggle whether or not this component is being displayed. So I will do that inside of app. So not only will we return customers, but we will also return a button. So I'll surround it by a fragment and then say button and close the button and this will say click me bro and this is what it's going to look like uh, over here actually so if we want this to be centered what we'll do is we'll just shift some of the uh, class names so let's change this to a div and this to a div and then just say class name is app now we can remove that from these here so we'll just get rid of class name app and class name app. So now this is broken. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I closed the div wrong, my bad. Perfect. All right, there we go. So now we have this button and let's tie this to some state and we'll display this component if the state is true. So over inside of app, we will import use state. Import use state from react and we'll define that state so const show customers and set show customers and we will default this to false so they will not be displayed by default now what we can do is have a ternary surrounding customers here and say show customers if this evaluates to true we'll display customers otherwise null so by default the customers will be hidden now we just have to make an event handler to toggle that value. So button 
on click, assign this a function, and inside of here we will say set show customers and pass in the opposite of show customers. So it'll toggle that value from false to true. So we click it and all the names show up. Booyah, progress. We click it again and it goes away, cool. Now we can change this text on here depending on the value. So let's create another ternary. This time we will surround this in quotes and say show customers. If so, we will say hide customers. I guess we'll keep the bro. Hide customers bro. Otherwise we will say show customers bro. Now we have a much more useful button. Very cool. Now when we do this, take a look at our network requests. We click the button and it makes a network request every time the component is shown. This is the on mount setting that you can configure. So if you go into customers, inside a use query when you pass in another object for the options, you can say on mount and we have refetch on mount. We can set that to false if we wanted and now we no longer get that network request. I think it's probably good to have it on, but if you want to turn it off, that's how you can do that. So let's go ahead and actually put that back to what it was, but now you know how that works and understand a little bit more about mounting and unmounting. One last example real quick is if we turn off the focus refreshing, so let's set that to false. Now it will only really do it if we get disconnected or toggle the component. So it's not going to make a new request when we change pages. Now we can go and change some data. Let's change this name to Mr. Curry. This will only be seen on the front end when we hide the customers and then reshow the customers. And you can see it flashed for just a small second showed the stale data while it was revalidating it in the background. So back to that stay a while revalidate concept. And you might not like that. You might not like that it showed the old data. Well, you can actually stop it from doing that using a setting. However, I'm not sure that you should do this. I want to show that it's possible. In some scenarios, you might want this. And that is the cache time. If we set this to zero, let's try this process again. So. We will go into MongoDB, change the name back to Caleb Curry. We'll update, and now let's go back to our page so the data is stale. We hide the customers, and then show the customer. Okay, I'm not entirely crazy here. I just saw that the cache time is still five minutes, which is the default. So you will want to make sure you refresh this to get that correct cache value so scrolling through now, cache time zero. So apologies on that little mistake, but probably a good thing to show on video. So let's try this once more. I'm going to change this name to something else, literally something else here. Hit update, view the site, hide the customers, and show the customers. And you saw no flash of the previous data. Basically, this is making a cold refetch every single time you hide this component and show the component. None of the data is cached locally. And you really only have to worry about the cache on dismount. So when we hide this component, you can see nothing shows up down here. We have no queries to worry about. That's because there's no queries in the DOM, nothing being displayed. If we went and we changed this cache time to something else, let's just remove it for a moment. We save now. We show the customers and hide the customers. You can see we still have information down here and our query still exists. And that's because it's in this inactive section and it has a specific cache time and you should be able to see that data. So here are our customers. So when we remount this component, it's not grabbing the displayed customers from state as we've previously done in the series, you know, maintaining a list of customers inside of state. Instead, it's retrieving that data from the cached values down here. Now, if you remove a component, it goes to inactive, it's going to sit there for five minutes. That's the default behavior, but you can customize that as shown. After five minutes, it'll be removed, AKA garbage collected, and then displaying the component again will make a new request to the server before any data is displayed. 
So I'll show you this by first reducing that time so we don't have to wait as long. So we'll say cache time and set this to, let's say 20 seconds. And now let's go ahead and show that component. And you'll need to also do that refresh. So to make sure you get that cache time correct. So now we'll show it and we'll see that we have 20 seconds for the cache time. When we hide it, we can start essentially a 20 second countdown in our head before this query will just disappear. And there we go. Now showing it again is like starting from scratch. Now the next thing I wanna show in this video is a loading display which is interesting with a cache. So let's just show the basics and then we'll see what happens when we change that cache value. So if you remember when we first started with use query, we destructured it and got a, an is loading property. We can access that on the object as well here. So let's go ahead and say if and customer query dot is loading, we will return something else such as a paragraph saying patience perfect so now what happens when we load this for the first time we show that component it says loading or actually it said patience for a very short period of time so let's throttle this to say fast 3g for a second do a refresh show customers it says patience and then it shows the customer data because of the caching it's not going to show that when we render the data again because it's retrieving that data from the cache. So now we are in a stale while revalidate state where we're not going to actually be loading anymore. We would actually be fetching instead of loading and then any data will just be replaced with new data. And that's the behavior as long as the data is in the cache. Meaning if we wanted to see that, we could disable the cache to say zero. And now every time we show the customers, we should get the patients which is probably not the behavior you want unless you are really concerned about out of date data. In that situation, you might not want a cache or you might want a very short cache time. Now, because the loading is only displayed once, there's actually another state you could use if you ever needed, and that is customer query dot is fetching. This is going to be set to true whenever we requery for new data. However, I don't see a need to use that in this case. For example's sake, I will console log it. We will set the cache time back to the default of five minutes. And by the way, you usually don't need to change that unless you specifically feel that you need to. The default is usually fine. So let's go to the site now, do a refresh, take a look at the console, show the customers. Both the times that is fetching was false. Now, whenever we show the customers, you can see it goes to true. And then once it's done, it goes to false. So that's the background fetching to get any new data if any new data exists. There's some other interesting properties such as is stale, which you can use to check if the data is stale and probably a lot of other cool ones in here as well. But we're not going to need those for now, so I will leave it as is. Wow, so there you go. That is your introduction to the stale data and caching inside of React Query. Hopefully it was a good intro and it helped you learn all the essentials. Use these skills to your advantage to make the most in sync front end to the back end as possible without completely overloading the back end with constant requests. So it's a good balance figuring out how often you need to refetch and how long of a cache you really need. One more quick note, and then I promise I will let you go. When you are dealing with caching, you have these keys for your different queries. These identify the queries and can actually be reused throughout your application. So if you have two locations using the same key, you can share that cache and always have in sync data across your front end as well. We're not going to get into examples of that in this video. So if you want some extra on that, feel free to do some additional research in React Query. For now, what I wanna do is I wanna take what we've learned and figure out how we can integrate this with other applications. So stay tuned, I'll see you in the next video. Please be sure to subscribe and I'll see you then, peace out.